Warning, this episode contains mild to heavy, explicit spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Reviews, discussions, and theories about films in horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. A ship carrying the most brutal convicts who escaped Korea to hide in the Philippines are being brought back home to face judgment when a mutiny occurs, then suddenly a science fiction movie takes over. 2022's Project Wolf Hunting, directed by Hong Sun Kim, is like a mix between Con Air Under Siege and the story of Ricky by way of Adam Chaplin and the Fist of the North Star, a Michael Bay film lensed in a Takashi Miike style. That's all good on blood-soaked paper, but is it worth your time? As a champion of South Korean cinema, yes. As a fan of Gorehound Splatterfest, a mega hell yes. As a deep, thought-provoking work of art to the cineast, well, the jury is still out on that. But is this a gut-strewn popcorn fun fest with some issues? It sure is. We follow a bevy of NPC characters, some cops, some criminals, as they set up the opening to the film, a freighter that will be exporting some bad dudes and bad ladies back to the motherland. Everyone in this film is a tough cookie, no crap taking hard ass. A BTS K-pop idol tattoo wash pretty boy, Seo in Gook is the de facto initial antagonist of this film and one of the only two memorable characters, a flashy snarling bad boy that is cartoonishly evil. His protagonist counterpart is Park Ho San, a lead detective sent to babysit the ne'er-do-wells. So these characters matter? Other than the white hat, black hat counterparts being fed to the grinder, not at all. The fact that this film on face value switches genres and movie style an hour into the storyline may completely turn some viewers off on looking for one type of film and receiving another. Those that enjoy gore, though, will be thoroughly entertained from beginning to end. An incredible achievement in practical gross-out wizardry, this film features endless amounts of splatter, limbs destroyed, faces pummeled beyond recognition, torsos obliterated. It is one of the best compilations of gruesome brutality ever put on celluloid. That alone is a direct set of marching orders for you. The gore in here is up there with the goriest of horror movies. It's wonderful. Truly a sight to behold. So going back to the film itself. From the trailers, you're slightly promised a jacked up prison escape movie. And that is true for the first hour of the film. And suddenly we are thrown into a Terminator slash Predator territory with legit heat vision. The film's central antagonist, Choi Gui Ha, playing Alpha, is the only other flashy character in this movie. A killing machine created by Japanese experiments in the Philippines in the 1900s. Yes, a non-aging super mutant that can tear people apart with his bare hands. Why does this happen? Who knows? Is it cool? Sure. Alpha is the ultimate slasher character let loose and delivering an astonishing body count. He has a neat design with a row of metal hinges on his eyes for some reason, but I'm sure it's fine. Now my only takeaway from the change in the genre is that I was left a little apprehensive. The same type of switcheroo happened, albeit more obviously with the film The Witch Subversion, an incredible science fiction movie focusing on telekinetic battles. That film also spent the majority of its finale setting up world building for its incredibly awful sequel The Witch The Other One. This film very guilty of this crime setting up the next film as we're introduced to a shady organization of super soldiers and twink smashing supermen. When you see the movie you'll know what I mean. The incredibly bland writing and stock characters serve no purpose other than to fill coffins in this spleen yanking tale. There are antagonists aplenty but they're mostly offed within the first half of the movie. We're left with a dwindling number of survivors as they race around the gigantic ship not knowing when or where the grim reaper will come a calling. I'm fine with not caring for characters in this type of film, but there's not really anyone to root for. So this is one of those cinema situations where you're here for the spectacle alone, and that obviously is a screw-up from the writer-director as he tries to force some sort of sympathy for the late-blooming hero of the movie. We're given an out-of-nowhere protagonist in the second half that is boring but is given backstory in such a quick fashion it seems pointless, even a MacGuffin to carry him into the imagined sequel. That's the downside of this film if you're looking for a complete story. There is none. The point A, point B, what we're here for, what we're seeing happens, that's fine. The rest of it, we're left to question if this is even going to be seen in a sequel at all. The superhero franchisation has reached another type of film, this one. Does it take away from the enjoyment of the movie? I don't think so. It's head and shoulders above many of its action horror counterparts by miles with its feet and feet of intestines and gross out violence. I give it a 6.5 out of 10 cranium crushing BJs. And with that, this has been The Horror Deconstruction.